This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed, and therefore should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discretion, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn of through this show. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, the podcast that goes beyond the tip of the iceberg to explore the elusive, extraordinary, and mystical phenomena occurring all around us all the time. In today's episode, Ren interviews Cynthia Hutchison, the Educational Program Director of the Healing Touch Program. I'm Renata Maniachi. Healing Touch is an energy therapy in which practitioners consciously use their hands in a heart-centered and intentional way to support and facilitate physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Healing Touch is considered by many in the field to be worldwide leaders in energy medicine. The goal of Healing Touch is to restore balance and harmonies in the energy system, placing the client in a position to self-heal. The Healing Touch program is an educational program dedicated to offering classes in the energetic therapy modality of Healing Touch, as well as providing support for Healing Touch students, practitioners, and instructors. I became aware of Healing Touch in my late high school years. The first time I had a Healing Touch session, it felt like my practitioner was taking a 10-ton brick of cement out of my head. It was incredible. I'd never experienced anything like it, and I felt so light in a way that I hadn't felt yet or hadn't experienced yet before that. I was a thinker. I was always, always, always thinking I could never turn my brain off, and so this was a really beautiful experience for me. It wasn't until about 10 years later where I decided to go back and take Healing Touch level one. That was a complete turning point in my life and my career. It was a two-day class and it completely turned my world upside down. I had been in the public health field and this two-day course changed everything and I knew that I needed to go into holistic health and energy medicine by the end of the weekend. It was kind of like the first year at Hogwarts if you're Harry Potter fans. Everything changed. So I decided to keep going through the program and actually it was only about five or six months later, that was in January of 2014, that I took Healing Touch Level 1. And about six months later, I decided to go to a Healing Touch retreat where the educational program director, Cynthia Hutchison, was attending. It's the first time that I met Cynthia and it was magical. She is an incredible human being and has been in energy medicine and Healing Touch in particular for years and years and was handpicked by the founder of Healing Touch program, Janet Menken, to succeed her to lead the program, to be the program's director after Janet passed. Over the past four years, Cynthia has become a trusted mentor and friend of mine. I cannot speak more highly for her and for the guidance that she's given me over the past several years. Even our first time meeting Cynthia planted the seed for me becoming a Healing Touch instructor. She has been a guiding light to me through my Healing Touch journey the whole time and I'm so grateful for Cynthia to be in my life and she is a wonderful practitioner and has done a lot for healing touch and a lot for energy medicine across this country and the world. Cynthia and I had this conversation at the Healing Touch Instructor Gathering in San Antonio, Texas earlier this year. She has incredible wisdom and insight and amazing stories about Healing Touch, and I'm so excited to share them with you. I should note that there were some minor technical and sound issues during the on-location recording for the interviews, so please bear with anything that sounds slightly rough. Are you ready? Then let's get meta. Welcome, Cynthia. Hello, Renata (laughs) and friends. It's really sweet to be here with you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much for talking to me. Cynthia, I always ask my my guests um, if they would like to share an experience that they consider being a metaphysical experience um, in their life that can have to do with healing touch and energy medicine or it can have to do with anything else. So I recall a time back, probably 18 years ago, when I was at a Healing Touch conference, and in the afternoon, I became very tired in a very unusual way. So I came up to my room to just rest, and as I was laying in bed, 
I felt someone next to my body, and I knew there wasn't a physical being there. So initially, it was kind of creepy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so I was in a place of feeling anxiety and some fear, but I was also curious and I didn't want to go into fear. So I centered and said some prayers and then I started to ask, who is this? What's happening right now? And I realized it was the one year anniversary of my father's passing. And I, I felt someone combing my hair, and it was, it was very pleasant and sweet and loving and nurturing. I allowed it to happen and stayed in a peaceful place, and I felt that that was the presence of my father with a very sweet hello and assuring me that he was with me and loved me, and I've always remembered that as a special experience of my life and it obviously was metaphysical wow thank you that's really sweet just out of curiosity would you say that you've had many what you would call metaphysical experiences no I'm sure you've heard of people who are clairvoyant and clairaudient, clairsentient, and I'm in the category of what you'd call Claire Zippo. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, clairaudient, clairsentient, and clairvoyant. Clairvoyant means literally clear seeing, so you can see on a level that most people can't. Clairaudient, you can hear on a level that most people can't. Clairsentient, you can feel on a level that most people can't, just for those in the audience who might not know what those yeah, are. Yeah, it's but beyond the five senses. Exactly. And into extra sensory perception, and people have found it curious that I've been in this position of being the educational program director since 2003, when most of the time I really don't sense kinesthetically with my hands, the, the energy field or the centers, as I would say the vast majority of our students and practitioners do. Maybe I'm an example of the fact that you don't need extrasensory perception to do this work effectively. And it's comforting to those students and practitioners who don't yet experience extrasensory perception or who don't have that as a regular experience, maybe on, off, or irregularly, or occasionally. Absolutely. Yeah. I really am tickled by Claire Zippo. <laughs> yes, that's me. That's amazing. So when you're working on people, because I know you to be somebody who sees clients and who teaches, do you just know where to go? I really trust the work. I did know Janet Menken personally, who's the founder of our program, and she brought this work in a way that it was an avenue into Western healthcare. So because she brought it as a standardized program through the field of nursing with various procedures and sequences and weaving in nursing theory as well as energy medicine concepts and theories. So that's a great segue, Cynthia. What was your introduction into the healing touch world? I had already been a practitioner of therapeutic touch, mm. which... Another energy medicine modality. Yes, therapeutic touch was probably the first form of hands-on energy medicine that had somewhat of a scientific basis, also rooted in nursing. And the founder of therapeutic touch is Dolores Krieger. I studied with Dolores Krieger on a few occasions, and that was my first energy medicine modality for 10 years, starting in 1982. I had an affinity to this work, but when I took my first Healing Touch class in 1992, then that was really love at first touch mm. for me, that I knew that it was my match, mm -hmm. my vocational life. Before, it was interesting, and I was intrigued, and I was practicing, but there was something about the Healing Touch program. So I just believe that I have a destiny, and when I met Janet Menken in this program, it was just clearly an energetic and heart match. So and despite being clear Zippo, you were still nevertheless attracted to therapeutic touch and then later healing touch yes, as an energy and, medicine modality. Yeah, for, for me what was interesting was that for 
the first few years as a therapeutic touch practitioner, I never felt anything kinesthetically. But what kept me going was that when I would work with people, they would have a response. They would feel better. Mm. They would have a relaxation response. Mm. They would have an insight. They would have a, a deep inner experience spiritually mm-hmm. or just anywhere from a mild to a moderate to a more dramatic healing response. So I knew something was happening, okay. but it wasn't anything I could perceive. That answers my question. That's what kept you going. You were getting feedback from the people that you were working on, so you knew that something was happening. Yes. This thing that you're doing with your hands that's affecting another person such that they are having an experience that is healing or in some other way for them, and and they know that something is happening or they feel that something is happening. And maybe this story might be of interest to you. When I started working with Janet Menken in the early to mid-90s, I offered my background as a nurse researcher to suggest that we develop a position for me to head up a research department for Healing Touch program. Because I said to Janet, hey, if we want credibility in the world of healthcare and in nursing as a a viable, credible energy medicine program, we should have a department of research and we should be publishing things and educating ourselves more in the scientific realm. So she took me on and I did serve as the director of our research department for several years. The first director, it sounds like. Yes, yeah. And so what happened is at the very beginning, I set an intention that Over the years, I was going to understand the scientific basis of energy medicine and in particular healing touch. But despite numerous interviews with scientists and researchers and doing lots of reading of studies, etc., I felt that after five years, I knew less rather than more because what happened is as the pieces of the puzzle started to come together a little bit here and a little bit there, the puzzle just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what happens, I think, for many of us is we become very humble the more we do the work because it's such a beautiful, magnificent, awe-inspiring mystery of life, the whole healing process. And yet spirit does teach us and allow us to see some of the connections and how things work. Mm -hmm. But my conclusion was, after all those several years, was, okay, maybe we don't know the mechanism of how it works, but we do know that something is happening. And for most people, that's all they really need. Absolutely. Yeah. That is so important to me because when I started my Healing Touch journey, I came to Healing Touch because I started in a different modality that could not answer the scientific questions that I so desperately needed at that moment in my life. And actually, Healing Touch could, my teacher could, Nancy Lester, could explain to me kind of how it worked in a way that I understood it in terms of physics and science, and that's what I needed at that moment. But... I love that story that you just said because the deeper I go into healing touch and the energetic realms, the less that I need to know how it works in terms of what earth people call science and physics (laughs) because I've realized that it doesn't need to be scientifically proven to be true. And of course, we love science. I have a deep appreciation for it. And that was my original training. But the hardcore Western way of doing science is so very limited because it's only a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much only look at the visible world and maybe a little bit into the invisible world, such as electromagnetics. But the more I've done this work, the more I know that the invisible world is more real than the visible world. And I'm just more comfortable there because after it's been 30 years now, it's very real to me and I I don't question it. And I've learned how to trust my intuition more and I don't need to 
have the clairs to know that somehow if I hold sacred space for another person and if I could hold positive, loving intentionality with my thoughts, with my thinking, if I can hold my heart in a compassionate, loving place, and if I'm willing to use my hands to serve another person, to support his or her healing process, then I trust something is happening whether it be evident in a dramatic way, in a subtle way, in an immediate way, or in a long-term way. Because sometimes we don't see anything happening in the moment. And it may be minutes, hours, days, or perhaps longer for the person to even have a realization, if there is a realization, that something has shifted. Right. And I'm comfortable with that now. I love that you brought up the invisible world because I mentioned this on this podcast a lot is that what we experience every day is the tip of the iceberg that's all we see but that there's this vast expanse underneath that nobody sees but is no less real and is no less affecting us in this world so I'm happy that you brought up the invisible because it's all around us and that's really what we're digging into here yes And speaking of that, that brings up the topic of spirituality, right, and faith, and what do people believe about higher power and creation, and where did we come from, and why are we here, and what's our purpose, what's it all about? One thing I really appreciate about our program is we have a a very all-embracing, non-dogmatic, spiritual perspective. So... People who believe in reincarnation as well as only one earth life feel comfortable here. People from different religions, spiritual streams, and various spiritual paths can feel comfortable here because we use universal spiritual terms and we also invite people to translate our philosophies, our assumptions, our theoretical framework, and our practices in a way that works for them. So we don't try to explain things in any religious or specific spiritual terms, but we leave it open enough that people are invited to explore. As I say to my students, don't believe everything you think and question everything because that's why we're here. We're here to learn. We didn't come here to shop. Yeah. Right? Often we think that the thoughts we have or that we were raised with or enculturated with are the truth because that's all we know. But it's not until we question those things and start to explore other options and ways of being that we really can expand our consciousness and discover more of the true nature of creation in the world and why we're here and where we came from and all those other lovely cosmic questions. (laughs) Absolutely. And I know when I walked in my first Healing Touch Level 1 class almost four years ago to the weekends, a couple weekends ago, after a couple hours, it just felt like I was exactly where I belonged and it felt like I was remembering this stuff and not actually learning it. And so that deep resonance of something in my being that I did not know how to explain but every single bell was dinging and alarm was going off like this is exactly where I needed to be at that moment and I am a non-religious person um, though I do consider myself quite spiritual it is a very appealing program and practice and value system and way of life Mm -hmm. that I'm so very pleased to be a part of. I love that you use the word remember because that is a very important concept that indeed in our spiritual essence that we come to earth, to earth school, to remember who we are in our divinity and our spiritual essence. And our soul agrees to forget so that we can remember out of our own freedom and, and free will and out of our individuality. I believe that our creator has given us this free will and we have the choice to evolve more quickly or more slowly. And of course, we both know people, including ourselves. Hopefully we're looking at our own lives too, of those who are really striving to align their thinking, feeling, and willing with truth, beauty, and goodness. This is the perennial wisdom that Aldous Huxley talked about in the 1940s that is really the basis of all the great spiritual streams and wisdom teachings and and religious streams. 
we're all aware of people who seem to be on a much slower path and they are not aligned with truth, beauty, and goodness, but they're given that freedom to evolve at a slower pace if that's what they're choosing. I just experience Healing Touch program as something that I'll forever be grateful for because of the remembering that it allowed me. And I don't know ever how to explain that to people because when you walk into something that you have actually never done before on this earth plane and you feel like you are remembering how to do it, not like you're learning how to do it, that feeling was so deep and unexplainable and it's something that you never forget. Being part of this program, myself as a practitioner and now an instructor, is humbling because this program helped me to wake up and remember a part of who I am. And maybe I don't know everything that I am, but this program really helped me to remember a part of that. I think that's one of the things that I love so dearly about Healing Mm. Touch. But I wanted to ask you, how have you seen Healing Touch be helpful in others? And I'm sure you've seen so many ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, How would you speak to how Healing Touch has helped people? That's a great question. I have my own experiences as a recipient of Healing Touch and as a practitioner of Healing Touch. But because I've been an instructor for so many years, I've heard many other stories through students and other instructors. So I'm aware of a a whole plethora, a whole range and continuum of people who've responded gradually versus dramatically, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. There really are no limits. And perhaps it's just a matter of how open is the recipient? Is the divine timing right? And is the practitioner really able to hold sacred space so that a person can self-heal? So those are the essential ingredients that I think of. I don't think we can ever force any healing or make anything happen. And in fact, I don't refer to myself as a healer. I'm fine if other people do, but personally, I just think of myself as a facilitator or even a helper elf, (laughs) a cheerleader of sorts. But I do know that if If I can be peaceful within and hold my thoughts in a pure, positive, intentional way, and if my heart is in a loving, compassionate place, and even whether or not I use my hands, sometimes it's just a state of being and and my hands are are still, I'm not actively doing a treatment, I can see people responding because anytime we're in the vibration of love and holding sacred space, People can tune into that and resonate with it. And those who are striving to be in a higher vibrational state can entrain to that. And they will start to feel better. They'll start to notice feeling better in body, mind, and spirit. Because someone is holding that vibration for them and it makes it easier for them to tune into that, so to speak. And we all help each other in that way. And it's not just through healing touch. When we sit with a friend, someone who loves us or an animal companion, and we feel safe and we feel love and there's positive emotion flowing, that's high vibration and that's healing. When we go outside to be in nature and we're inspired by beauty or just connecting our body to mother earth and we start to resonate with the vibrational frequency of of the life force and abundance of earth this is very healing as well listening to music that inspires us or dancing in a joyful way moving our bodies so that we're expressing ourselves physically this is very healing too There's so many forms of healing. A healing touch is one of the ways. And healing touch is one way in the whole field of energy medicine because there are are many modalities in the field of energy medicine. What I love about healing touch is that we are a credible source. Um, As you know, we were the only educational and practitioner program to hold not only one, but two national accreditations, Mm -hmm. one in nursing and one in healthcare. We have a a long history. We're time-tested. We've been around going on 30 years. We're an evidence-based program. 
There have been more than 100 studies that have been done that seem to show support in a number of ways that something is happening to support the healing process. And we've earned the respect of the Veterans Administration system who now calls us in for, for classes and for treatments and for creation of clinics. We've been funded by a number of universities and the National Institutes of Health for some studies. More and more academic institutions as well as other health care facilities are showing interest in energy medicine and, and healing touch specifically because they see it, it's a natural, non-invasive, effective, affordable, gentle, time-tested method of supporting clients and their patients and their families for body, mind, spirit healing and self-healing so we can learn this work and treat ourselves. Absolutely. Healing Touch was started by a nurse, Janet Menken, and there is healing touch in so many hospitals now because so many of our practitioners are nurses and bring that into the hospital space with um, their, their patients. I'm glad that you mentioned healing touch as one of many energetic healing modalities. A mentor that I have once described healing as a huge tree and that all the different branches are many. The different ways of healing are many, as many as there are in a very large tree. And the energy medicine branch branches out into yet smaller branches, one of which is healing touch and others of which exist. That could be polarity therapy and zero balancing and Reiki. Um, but that you can try all of these different branches, so to speak, and then keep going. I think people in our country and in the world, a lot of the time, get stuck on the Western medicine branch, and they don't realize how many other branches there are that are involved in healing. That's one branch of a very large healing tree. Yeah. It's also so empowering to people, and I think that's part of our whole healing process is to take responsibility for our healing. And these days, we have so many choices. And for some people, actually, having choices is hard because sometimes people just want to be told what to do or they just want to be fixed or they want to go to someone and and be healed. I think we're at a stage of evolution of consciousness where spirit is saying, know thyself, Mm -hmm. take responsibility, tune in to who you really are in your spirit essence, listen to the message and choose one or more modalities that you resonate with. There are so many other ways of healing even beyond energy medicine, you know, such as just healthy lifestyle and nutrition and fresh air and sunshine and pure water and did I say exercise (laughs) (laughs) no but that's important yes smiling Smiling. (laughs) good friends yes good sleep intention over technique is one of our concepts we have about 30 major concepts and principles that are part of the the teachings and assumptions and theoretical framework in healing touch program One thing I really appreciate about our program is this concept of intention over technique because it means that you can technically mess up on how you place your hands, where you place your hands, the order you place your hands. You can not do the prototypical order or treatment as taught and still have an effective treatment because we do believe that really the most important thing is the focused, positive, intentional thought, the compassionate heart, and the willing hands. Now, obviously, there's a value in following a standardized program and learning how to apply these, the 30 methods that we teach in a specific way or um, within the options that, that are recommended, because... We are a nationally accredited program, and what that means is that the healthcare facilities, um, the public, the accrediting bodies can have confidence that healing touch practitioners meet a certain standard of care, that they have a certain education, they have a code of behavior, we have our code of ethics, our scope of practice. 
And that means that no matter where you receive healing touch in the world from a healing touch certified practitioner, there will be a certain standard, a, a professional ethic and practice standard that is across the board. And yet we also know that maybe the most important standard is the standard of the heart. Stay in your heart, create safe space for another person, learn how to hold sacred space or the vibration of love or positive energy, whatever phrase or word you're most comfortable with. And follow the energy, follow your guidance. Don't let your ego get in the way. Stay in a very humble place knowing that the energy is moving through you, not from you. We're not giving away our own energy. We're plugged into source energy, which is benevolent, abundant, and creative. As we learn how to do that through our practitioner preparation, which is a process of centering, grounding, and attuning, and holding intention for another person, then a response will be seen most likely. I love that you brought up intention over technique. For me, it just kind of gets at one of the cores of this podcast, which is the intersection of science and spirituality, or the intersection of science and magic, you might say. So like the science is the technique, you know, we have a technique and it works. And that is part of the healing process. And that is part of what Western medicine and other things have been able to explain is like the science behind this works, this technique, the way that we have arranged it, it works. But then there's also the mystery, the spiritual, the magic that is the intention. And that's everything that you were talking about having to do with spirit and allowing the energy to flow where it needs to go and trusting that it goes where it needs to go. And I think too often in our society, we, we hold up the science which, is, which should be held up, and it should not be lowered at all. But we simultaneously, I think, need to hold up the mystery and hold it in equal space. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, you know, with intention over technique and healing touch, it really allows that space for the intention to hold that mystery, that spirituality, that magic mm-hmm. that is no less real yeah. than the science and then the technique part. Yeah. We could still have our curious minds, which is part of how we have been created as human beings. We have this innate curiosity to want to understand how things work. And and we should feed that curiosity through our studies, through our explorations, through our comparisons, um, going deeply into these things. And yet, simultaneously we have to hold the mystery and have such a respect for it and be in this place of humility because we're in a state of awe and wonder of the magnificence of creation. Mm -hmm. And we can hold both of those places at the same time. I think that's um, a beautiful aspect of humanity when we can hold both of those places. You started the first kind of research area within Healing Touch program, and I think that's what you said was your first connection with Janet. The work was the first connection, but once I made a commitment to Healing Touch program and I knew it was my path Mm -hmm. and has continued to be my path, I felt that I could serve our program in supporting uh, the understanding of the science of healing touch because I knew we needed it. Janet Menken in the early beginnings was attacked quite a bit from the Rocky Mountain skeptics and other groups who felt that what she was doing was was inappropriate, unscientific, woo-woo, and, you know, not based in reality. And I knew that we needed a stronger scientific basis or at least more balance in that area so that we could gain ground and find our ways into healthcare facilities because this is one of the ways we're going to change our healthcare system, which is very, very sick. 
because it is so fragmented and only focuses mostly on the biomedical model. But true care where people can heal must be holistic. It must be focused on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So if we can demonstrate, which we are, that energy medicine is effective and healing touch as our particular modality is effective, then we can start treating people more effectively, more non-invasively, more affordably, and more holistically. Absolutely. Um, That's wonderful. Thank you. You said that very beautifully. Um, And you, no doubt, were able to do that because of your nursing background. You had a, you, you want to talk about that for a moment? You came into, were you a nurse before you got into energy work? Yes, and while I uh, appreciate my vocational background and, and I love nursing and nurses, uh, one thing that I also love about our program is that Janet Menken felt that anyone should be able to learn our program and become credentialed in it. Mm -hmm. So even though initially it was more nursing based, uh, she, within a few years after it had gained much popularity, said, really, this is for everyone. Anyone who's motivated and willing to learn and can be in the heart um, can learn this work and can be educated in it and achieve this professional credential. And then over the years, since she passed and her daughter took over ownership and leadership, um, indeed, it has been in the more recent years that we gained the, the two national accreditations, which we're very proud of and which are opening doors for us so that we can make more headway into mainstream health care and help heal a very um, ill health care system, a sick care system. Right. We want to make it more healthy through these concepts and practices. Right. And I, for one, am um, so grateful not coming from a medical background to be able to be to be invited and able to do this work and to become become a Healing Touch certified practitioner and instructor. I came from a public health background, which is public healthy, (laughs) but not, you know, not a nursing background. So it's wonderful that it is open to anyone who feels the call or feels the need to explore this type of healing for themselves, for their families, for their friends or to become a practitioner and serve the community at large. Yeah. Yeah. Before we were talking about how Healing Touch could help folks, and I just just wanted to share some of my experiences with clients and myself really quickly about that. On a physical level, I've seen, I've used Healing Touch on myself just to take pain away. If I knock my knee on something or if I have allergies, you know, to use some of our techniques to clear out congestion and stuff so it can be used on a physical level a lot of my clients who come see me for my in my practice come for emotional mental reasons mostly stress stress in their lives stress at work or in the home and what they come for is to feel relaxed and to relieve and to release stuff that is going on within them on an emotional mental level and then of course there are so many people who come in and say that it just benefits them on a level greater than that on a spiritual level Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe few people and I do get people who come in that that is their express reason that they're coming Mm -hmm. for healing touch is to feel more balanced on a spiritual level but that's not common for people to walk in the door and say that but often folks come in and leave feeling similar to that have you found that yeah as a matter of fact my favorite clinical story is a a man who came to me years ago who wanted to quit smoking. And I supported that goal. I thought that was a great idea. I didn't make any promises, but I said, well, let's see what could happen. And during our intake interview, the first session, I found out that he was atheist, 
which actually is pretty unusual for someone to come to a healing touch session because most people at least have some sense um, of higher power or belief in that. But he was a very loving father. He seemed happily married. He was a successful salesman. And I applied the first treatment, and afterward he didn't want to process anything with me. He stayed quite quiet, and he said, I'm, I'm just going to go driving for a while. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure what his response was. Mm -hmm. Um, this basically happened four weeks in a row where he came for treatments. I did the work. He didn't want to process it, and, but he would r reschedule. So finally at the fourth week, he said, Cynthia, how did you do that? And I said, what? And he said, well, you messed with my brain chemicals in such a way that it felt like a spiritual experience, but I know there is no such thing. So, like, mm -hmm. how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And I chuckled a bit, and I said, I, I don't really know, Mel, but um, let's just see what unfolds. If you're interested, we could keep working together. So the next session, he looked at me, and he said, all right, I have two things to tell you. One is that I called my father up, and the interesting thing was he hadn't talked to his father in 10 years, mm -hmm. and they had a healing conversation, and they were back in relationship. And he said, the other thing is I now believe that there is such a thing as higher power. Wow. And then I had one more session with him before I moved out of the Washington, D.C. area to Boulder, Colorado, but I saw him a year later when I was in town, and he came to visit me, and he shared an update about his life. And then he said he was meditating at this point, receiving occasional healing touch from a different practitioner. And then he said, oh, and by the way, I'm still smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so it did it. Yeah. Stop his smoking. Right. So we, we had a good laugh about it because we didn't achieve the goal that he originally came right. for. But in fact, he agreed that what he received instead was something much more worthwhile to him, mm -hmm. which was a relationship with Creator in a relationship with his father. So we wow. acknowledged healing happened at a different level, right. which is kind of another tenant in Healing Touch program is we cannot direct the energy. It's going to go wherever it's needed. Mm -hmm. So even though you or I might hold an, a specific intention for healing based on the client's request and the perceived need, that in fact the energy might go at a different level of being. Right. And we trust that there, the energy has its own intelligence and the person at an unconscious or subconscious level is going to receive that energy where it's most needed. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot in my practice. People come in and they think, you know, these are the things on my mind, this, this, and this, you know. And what happens is the energy just goes right to the root. Oh, the, yeah. You know, some of the things that they mentioned might be the symptoms, but the energy just goes right to the root source or whatever is going on underneath all of that and that it helps to release everything else so that they're feeling better about whatever they came in for. Yeah. But it might not look exactly like, oh, we just addressed this one issue that you came with. Yeah. It spreads to different yeah. areas. I see that in my, in my practice that's in Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> it's another one of our concepts and principles is we may hold an intention but we can't be attached to it right. and it's a great way to keep our egos out of it as well mm -hmm. because we have to remember it's not us that's creating the healing it's our ability to hold sacred space and our clients ability to feel safe to let go to release that which no longer serves and to embrace a higher vibrational where higher vibration where healing could happen. There I, I actually do get a fair 
fair amount of people in, coming into my practice who maybe don't describe themselves as atheists, but they have no spiritual practice or affiliation or religious practice or affiliation, but they're, they're there. They found themselves there, you know, so they're open enough on some level um, to just to just see, see where it takes them or something brought them in there. Yeah. Yeah. How are you working with Healing Touch currently? We talked about your role as educational program director for Healing Touch program. Um, how is Healing Touch in your life right now? I would say I wear three hats right now. One is as the educational program director, so I oversee our approximately 150 instructors who teach around the world, mostly in about 10 countries, but primarily in the United States. And I have helped to um, write or revise or update our curriculum which the core curriculum is in five different levels. So that's one role. My other role is as an educator. So I teach all the levels of the program and instructor training. So you may remember (laughs) a couple of years ago coming to instructor training where we spent the week together with other people who were also learning to be instructors. Right. And then I do have a small private practice in Boulder, Colorado, where I see clients who come with a variety of health issues, body, mind, and spirit. There are five levels of Healing Touch program, and Cynthia teaches all five of them, and level six, which is for instructors. Once you've become a Healing Touch certified practitioner, then you can take level six to become an instructor for the Healing Touch program at level one. Yes. And move on from there. That's a lot of hats, Cynthia. <laughs> you, you have quite a few hats, too. <laughs> <laughs> we like cats. Cats are fun. <laughs> They're, they give us a nice variety of expanding ourselves and being creative and finding different aspects of who we are and how we are in the world. And because we have so many instructors, people could travel all over the country and find a level one class in in most big cities Mm -hmm. and in some of the smaller areas as well. And then uh, we also have quite a few level two instructors, um, a modest amount of level three, and then enough level fours and fives. So people who are interested can usually find a class pretty easily without traveling too far, at least for the level one. So, Cynthia, if people wanted to find you, if people in Boulder were listening and were interested in your practice, how would they find you? Well, I think I would just give you my website, which is boulderhealingtouch.com. Excellent. And if you are not in the Boulder area and looking for Healing Touch, you can look at healingtouchprogram.com. Yes. It's a national program and you can look up an instructor that is in your area or a class that's being taught in your area. For practitioners, if you would just like to experience a treatment from a certified practitioner. We also have clinics and practice groups where many of the apprentices or students practice and have opportunities to develop themselves as a practitioner. So, Cynthia, is there anything else that you can think of that I didn't ask about that you feel is coming up and you would like to share? Maybe one more thing just to encourage people who may have a curiosity or interest and just trust that if you have an interest, that that may be a a calling or a little whispering in your ear and you don't have to doubt it and you don't have to feel that you... You have to know certain things first or have a certain educational background or credentials to do this. Truly, it is the case that if if you can hold positive intentional thoughts for another person, if you can more or less stay in your heart, doesn't mean you never get distracted, but if you can hold sacred space for another person and you're willing to use your hands in a way that will benefit another person, you can do this work and you can help facilitate healing in others. Lastly, that this work can be applied for your own self-care. It's a wonderful self-care method and sometimes people just study healing touch 
first to become more healthy for themselves, and then they expand that to working with family, friends, community, colleagues. And then sometimes people get inspired to get on the professional track and become a certified practitioner. There's lots of possibilities, but we hope that one day Janet's vision will be fulfilled, and that would be healing touch in every home, every healthcare facility, and every school. Thank you so much for sharing your time. You are a busy human, busy person, and you've shared all this time with us. I so appreciate you. Renata, I admire you and I honor you and I've so enjoyed uh, knowing you the last several years and watching you evolve in your path as a student, as a practitioner, now as an instructor, a member of the board of the foundation and uh, as a member of the Healing Touch Program Ethics Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find more information about Cynthia Hutchison at boulderhealingtouch.com and the Healing Touch Program at healingtouchprogram.com. In our next episode, Ren travels to speak with Julia Malone, an aboga plant medicine provider who lives and works in Arenal, Costa Rica. Let's Get Metaphysical is entirely listener supported, so if you like what we're doing, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Let's Get Meta is a production of the HANA Healing Arts Network. The show's host is Renata Maniachi. Audio editing and production by Zoe Ravenwood of Hatfish Digital Media. The voice of the credits is me, Aries. This week's music is Starlight by Psychedelic Pedestrian. Thanks for listening.